Hello everybody, my name is Shaboon and my favorite from Baby Challenge Slab and today we will be looking at another level from the game Algebra 2. Woo. So, we already completed level 1, remember? So now, let's get to level 2. Level 3 is looking pretty mysterious over there. Factoring polynomials. Looks fun. Alright. So, uh, let's see how we can do this. Now, before we start, the game has told us that there are two ways to factor. Right, you know? Factoring. You need to know the right set of rules to do that spell. And completing the square. And many people don't learn the second method as early as they do the first one. <coughs> The second method is a bit harder, but it is much more useful because sometimes this spell, it doesn't work. But this, this other spell, while it is complicated, will always work. Oh, so now let's see first how regular factoring works. So first of all, let's say we have x squared plus a bit smart about this you see you see all right so huh ah uh, 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 i think i got it but i'm not very sure if i got it so i'm going to go for x squared minus 5x minus 84. can you solve this i'll give you 10 seconds 10 9 Pause the video for more time. Eight, seven, don't cheat by looking on the internet. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. So the way to solve this is first, you see this negative 84 here and this negative five here? Let's put it in a little X shape today. So negative 84, negative five. Now what we do here is we need to find two numbers that multiply to negative 4 and add to negative 5. Why? Because we need this, we need to split up this number so that it is, so that we can divide it between 84 and x. So what two numbers can multiply to negative 84 and add to negative 5? Well, it's negative 12 and positive 7. Let's see what I mean by divide up in a minute. So minus 12x plus 7x minus 84. Now, we're going to look for a common denominator in both parts. So you see 7x and 84? <clears throat> and this has to be, one of the numbers has to be divisible or both of the numbers have to be divisible by this top guy because for the purpose of factoring. So, we have x squared minus 12x plus 7x minus 84. So, x squared minus 12x, what is the common, what is the greatest common factor here? Well, that would be x, as, remember, x squared is essentially saying x times x. And 12 is x times x. So, we can say this is equal to x times x minus 12. And then, plus, what is the greatest common denominator here? Well, it's not x, because there's no x from behind the 84. So, it has to be 7. So, 7 x minus 12. All right, now, do you notice anything over here? That's right, both of these are the same, which means this is just equal to x plus seven times x minus 12. All right, that's how we do regular factoring. However, what about completing the square? Well, that should be a bit harder, but you'll get the concept eventually. So, mm, an intuitive way to understand how this spell works is take 
a toy like that that has a sign like that. So let's say we have the expression x squared plus um two x plus three. Now we can ignore this three, but working with these two x's is pretty hard. For now, let's imagine two as some variable b or constant b. So now what we do is we're adding x squared and bx. So the area of the square is x squared. And what do we need to do to make an, a, a rectangle with the area bx? Well, obviously we need a rectangle with the smaller side being b and the bigger side being x. All right. So we're just gonna do this. So this is to remind us about our little expression. So now, how do we add these together? Well, there's a pretty easy way to do it. Imagine that you split this into half. So, I'm just going to take, no, 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 no. So imagine splitting this in half. Got to be pretty careful. All right. Careful this week over. All right. So here is, here are our two little rectangles. They have a side length of B, and they're both the rectangles with equal area, meaning that their side length will be B over 2. Hmm, good to know, good to know. All right. Now what we're going to do is, not what I wanted. Now what we're going to do is, shoot. Now what we're going to do for the third time is, we're going to rotate. So now, this is still x. This is x as well. However, this small side length is b. All right. So now, what we can do is we combine this with the other square to try and make a bigger square. So completing the square, get it? Gotta rotate this a little bit to make sure it fits. But you get the idea, you get the point. I, I'm, I'm sure you get the idea or the point. But, uh, all right. So this is one of them. And then you have the other one. And I'm gonna rotate it a little bit as well. And so now it almost, almost looks like a square. But have you noticed that there's this one little piece at the end that we're missing? Well, what do we need to put there? Well, remember, this is b over 2. That is b over 2. So this little missing piece must be b over 2 squared. So b over 2 squared. Now, what is the area of this new square? Well, that would be one of the sides is x plus b over 2. Another one of the sides is x plus b over 2. So it must be x plus b over 2 whole square. So now let's go back to our whole thing. x squared plus bx was our original. Then we added this new little square that was b over 2 squared. And that, in total, gives us x plus b over 2 squared. So now, this can be useful in many situations. For example, let's say we had x squared plus, hmm, what could I do? 
plus um, 7x. And then I could do, uh, let's go for 12. So how do we factor it with completing the square? Well, we have x squared plus bx right here. In this case, b will be 7. So what we do, we're going to add this b squared or b over 2 squared. So 7 over 2 squared. And then, but then remember, it's not going to be equivalent to the original if you don't subtract. We've got to keep everything balanced, you know? So, now, remember, this is going to give us, in its entirety, x plus 7 over 2 squared. 12 minus, plus 12 minus 7 over 2 squared. Now let's just calculate what 7 over 2 squared is. Alright, so that gives us x minus 12.25 squared plus, or rather, minus 0.25. It doesn't look very simple, but let's try another one with this. This looks simple as well, doesn't it? The problem is, let's try and think of something that will multiply to 3 and add to 2. Nothing. Nothing comes to mind because 1 and 3 are the only factors of 3. And you might think, well, 3 and negative 1. But those two together would make a negative 3 which is it what we have here. That's the problem. So that means this spell is inept compared to things like these. So we'll have to use completing the square instead. Plus b over 2 squared. So 2 over 2 squared. Plus 3 minus 2 over 2 squared. And now we can do the same thing. We go x plus 2 over 2 squared plus 3 minus 2 over 2 is 1. Square that, you get 1. So you get x plus 1 over squared plus 2. Bam, bam, bam. We just factored something that was unfactorable by previous standards. See? That is, those are both of our methods of fact. So, thank you everybody for watching.